Hi, I'm Chris Roselli. And I'm Clara Lewis. Welcome to Western Window, a show made for you by students at Western Washington University. This time we get to talk with Will Braden, Western alum and internet sensation. We check in with students to find out more about their commitment to service. We'll meet Annette Devick, working clown and distinguished alum. We'll check in with some dedicated Viking athletes and more. So stay with us as we explore our world through Western Window. Roger Ebert called it the best cat internet video ever made. The Atlantic reviewed it as a little bit arty, a little bit cheeky, decisively feline in focus. Will Braden's Henri Le Chat Noir series is a group of short videos that follow the existential musings of a tuxedo cat. Will spoke recently with us about college, graduation, and the value of angst. So you guys ready to watch some cats? <laughs> We're here at the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota on Open Field for the Internet Cat Video Festival. It's really modeled after our regular award ceremony, like the Academy Awards. So there are such categories as comedy, documentary, foreign film. We even have a Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> and it will conclude tonight with the People's Choice Award, one that has been voted online, the most popular video out of the festival. And, and we'd like, like to present, present Will with our first Golden Kitty for the Internet Cat Video Festival. I'm honored by it. I, I mean, I think that it's that this whole experience has been a really great example for me of how there are real people out there that are not just numbers on a YouTube channel. Every one of those clicks, every one of those, you know, those forwards, that's a person who's liking something that you're doing or enjoying it or wants to share it. And after over 10,000 nominations, emails from all sorts of countries around the world, cat videos might be not only the language of the internet, but maybe a universal language. Join me in welcoming 2001 Arts and Sciences Distinguished Alumnus and friend of Western Washington University, William Braden. Greetings to the class of 2013, faculty and staff, proud parents and bored siblings. I know there are probably some who heard I was going to be giving a speech and said, the cat guy? Uh, no way that guy is giving advice to our kids. We gotta take a bridge out or something, just keep him down in Seattle. <laughs> but try as they might, here I am. My name is Will Braden. I was a class of 2001. I graduated with an English degree. It was, my focus was creative writing. Specifically historiographic metafiction. Which is basically like, I should have learned how to make lattes. Immediately after Western, I went to Europe for a bit. I taught English for a few years in Germany. Um, and I came back and I went to film school in Seattle at the Seattle Film Institute. Uh, that's where the first Henri video was made. It was a project for film school. And then I just sort of bounced around for a few years after that. I did a lot of videography. I sh shot weddings, local commercials, stuff like that. Worked in cafes. And uh, then just this past year, the sequel to Henri came out and went viral. and won a bunch of awards and I got to write a book and give a commencement speech. Mon nom est Henri. Je suis un chat noir. J'habitais en vie de luxe. Mes concierges m'emmènent. Ma chemise est si vide. Mon œil filtré quand il est pur. Je ronronne rarement. 
Within the lava, so come on, say a good excitement. A man on post some plank the mountain down the lunches on a beat. Set you the meme. Je suis libre. Je suis un personne. Les puces ne sont pas possibles. Pourtant, elle est ta puce. Je fais de nouveaux amis. Mais rarement la scade. Il semble déjà être fait s'enfuir. Et pour croire pas, juste ne sont mis partout. Et si j'ai des mots que des mots avec chaque chicanard, je suis perdu. Partu, je suis déterrané. Je suis comme un pendule. Si la ne se balance pas. C'est mes carré mieux, c'est aussi une action réflexe. Rien de plus. Je suis hanté. Je suis hanté. Je I would rather do 10 films that are 2 minutes than one 20 minute film, just because I, that's the way I like to see things, that's the way I like to process jokes and characters, and that's why YouTube and Henri are such a good mix, I think. It's good timing. I think liberal arts education is hugely important. I think that I, I might make jokes myself and I certainly am not averse to the jokes about graduating with philosophy degrees or English degrees or whatnot. And whether that translates into a career, whether it has nothing to do with what you end up doing, or whether you make a career for yourself that's directly related to that, I, I don't think that's as important as just the experiential nature of college. So. Because there's so much minutia of making sure you graduate, and but at the same time, you know that that f that fun sort of vibe <laughs> it lasts for a few days, and then you just go, "What's next?" And if you treat that "What's next?" question as a good thing rather than a a paranoid, apprehensive thing, then you'll be fine. No, no, no. You devez plaisanter. J'arrête de rester dans la boîte. Pole vaulting. It seems like an impossible feat. Flying up to 20 feet in the air and propelled over a bar. Although it seems like magic, it's really a mix of technology, physics, and dedication that allows these Western students to excel at such a demanding sport. I, I was doing judo my first year, freshman year of high school, and my friend's like, oh, you gotta try pole vault, man, it's so much fun, it's so awesome. I'm like, all right, I'll, I guess I'll give it a try. So went out and then went to a couple practices and just fell in love with it right away. I think it was like the first year I was here, I PR'd by over a foot, so. And once you get up high, then a foot means a lot. You're thinking about it, I gotta accelerate, I gotta run fast, I have to have big arms, good swing, and then it's like, and don't hurt yourself. <laughs> My PR is 12.10. If I get 13, then I can start thinking about doing it after school. If I get 13-6, then I can start thinking about Olympics, but I just do it for fun. That's what I try and remember is have fun. You've got to control the pole. You've got to be in control and going up and, you know, you're trying to clear a bar and leave it up there. So it's, you've got to have some control. It takes a long time. Lots of things are going through my mind, and they're all split-second decisions. Like, right when I plant, I'm thinking, how did that plant feel? Did I feel like my step was on? Did I feel like I was off? Am I, do I feel like I'm going to make it up over the pole or make it into the pit, even? You know, you don't want to be used to a certain habit that isn't a certain way you should pull. The 
they're thinking through their run and they're thinking through that and they you know so it's not consistent if they just run plant jump then they can get the rest of it done but they can't do it if they don't get down here and take off you know as high schoolers they did real well so um Karis, you watch her struggle out here a little bit and you probably don't want to put this on tape but you watch her struggle out here a little bit she's three-time all-american you know and for whatever reason i think it's her senior year it's really important to her and she's almost like afraid she's not going to be successful instead of just letting it happen yeah. Yeah. like i can accept that i may not be the best in the world but that doesn't mean that i'm not going to have fun and that doesn't mean that i'm not going to work my ass off for this sport when i'm running it's not so much like that whole sentence is going through my head like, oh, is my step on? It's just like, I feel this. This is how it's supposed to be. Right after takeoff, you swing up and you're still going straight upside down. And you start to turn and feel yourself go over the bar and you feel the bar just like right at your chest. And as you're laying go of your pole, you just feel like time kind of stops for a second. That part just feels amazing, but almost as amazing as after you clear the bar and you're falling down and you look up and the bar's still on the standards. That feeling is great. Yes! The, the hardest part of today is learning how to override your body telling you that this is not something you're supposed to do and still keep going with it and at full speed at a stationary object. <laughs> Western alumna Annette Devick's resume includes skills such as acrobatics, dance, artistic bicycling, juggling, stage combat, and Chinese chair balancing. That's right, Annette is a professional clown. A professional clown who has performed with Cirque du Soleil, the Axis Theater, Cirque Eloise, and the Big Apple Circus. The spark that drew her to Western is still alive and well. On the bulletin board in my high school, Cam High, I saw a poster announcing summer school at Western Washington University. Well, needless to say, I went down to Western. All the professors that actually, you know, became my professors were there teaching along with stage fighting uh, teachers and just, you know, dance teachers, everybody. And I fell in love with the university and I think the professors liked me too because they said if I really wanted to continue there that they could get me in. So that's what they did. I um, cancelled out of Calgary and uh, within two weeks I was enrolled uh, at Western Washington University and never looked back. It was, it was heaven. Because Western was so liberal and so open to us experimenting and trying new things, I, I started combining the theatre and dance there. And I will never forget um, Tom Ward, um, our dear professor that just passed away. His wife Diana saw me in a performance of uh, dance movement and she had me pegged right there. She said, Annette, that's a gift. Um, you, you combine movement and theater and dance so well. And uh, there you go. That's what I went on to do. A 
friend of mine told me about Cirque du Soleil, this, uh, this brand new company, and he said, Annette, you'd really, really love it. Um, it's got everything that you like to do. It combines the theater and acrobatics. And literally, we're talking, this is when Cirque du Soleil was just starting, 1984 and 1985. Oh, I decided I wanted to study Russian clowning more thoroughly. That's my uh, most recent adventure. So I contacted my colleagues at Cirque du Soleil and I said, um, where's the best uh, Russian clown teacher? And they said, hey, lucky for you, he lives in Toronto. So I went to Toronto, studied with him. That led to an invitation to Paris to be with one of the world's most renowned Russian clowns, Slava Polunin, and I spent uh, two and a half weeks at his estate outside of Paris. That led me to an invitation with the same company to go to Holland and be in Slava's snow show for a short stint. And then I got my Canada Council grant and that allowed me and uh, provided me with the funding to go study Russian clowning in Russia. Western taught me how to be self-sufficient and resourceful. Uh, I did children's theater there, I did main stage, um, and I worked as a technician. That taught me a lot. And being a technician and stage manager even today is my waitressing job. I'd much rather go work backstage than have a job that's completely unrelated to the arts. I like to uh, pursue my dreams and, and live my life as truthfully as I can and not let anything stand in my way. Western Center for Service Learning has been a bridge between Western's campus and the Bellingham community for nearly 20 years, sharing ideas, knowledge, and resources, all with the common goal of building a better community. The work that these students do every day benefits us all. My name is Marissa Bunker, and I am a senior at Western Washington University. I'm a communication major. I'm interested in organizational communication and how people interact in the workforce. I'm a film studies minor, so that's through the English department, and I mostly am working with film history. I think that that's something that's really fascinating in terms of looking at what kind of things influence people to go see movies and why people love film. The course that I taught that was a service learning course is organizational communication. It's called COM 428. I became involved in the service learning project here at Western. I was in communication 428. It is a course that looks at how we communicate and function and talk and behave in organizations. One of the projects that was laid out was a project for Pitford Film Center. We were going to help with the marketing. What we wanted to know was what was going on with students. Um, we had a hunch that um, they may not be learning about what we're showing at the Pickford. Couldn't figure out why we weren't having more students attend. Alice is the executive director for Pickford Film Center and she wanted to kind of look at different demographics for Pickford Film Center and take a look at all the different ways that we can maybe get more attendees. One of the things that we decided on is that since we were all college kids, we wanted to look at the 18 through 25 demographic. Were they not interested in movies? Were they not interested in coming to a theater to watch movies? So we decided that we were going to do a survey. See if we could pick into the brains of the student population to learn how we could get them to come to the theater more often. And so we did an online survey and then we came back with some results, did some kind of research analysis figured stuff out and then we presented Alice with the results and basically gave her some input on what we thought would help bring some more students to the Pickford Film Center. There was a report at the end which was like here's what we learned and here's the direction that we advise you to go on. 
It was really great. It was really thorough. And we came to the conclusion that it probably would have been crucial for them to have more social media, to have more of a constant interaction both on Facebook and Twitter and also find new ways to get students involved because that was how people were finding out about the Pickford was through websites, different links to different places and so getting everybody together in a community online was something that we recommended to them. And then there's of course always the added benefit when uh, a student gets an internship out of the experience or when a student gets offered a job. I helped them start with a social media plan, an internship plan, and then a marketing coordinator position opened up here that's something that they wanted to have for years and Alice emailed me the link to the marketing coordinator position and they liked what I had to offer and so they offered to have me come in part-time and be an employee here. I think that service learning was an excellent opportunity. It almost felt like a job and I felt like I was helping the community and I felt that I was able to do something that was bigger than just the class. They are seeing the theories and the concepts come alive. To me it's really a win-win situation for both parties. It's just a great way to get our education and learn the things that we want to learn in the classroom and then take that to the real world. They're making connections between material that's exciting and engaging for me too. Even if it seems intimidating or if it seems like something that you look at and you're really curious about, I say that when in doubt just take a service learning class because you can never get you can never get enough experience from just being out there and being involved in the community. Comic-Cons are conventions that allow people from all levels of experience to come together and celebrate modern culture. Comics, games, art, movies, music, and more. Shared passion is what brings people together, and it all adds up to good, clean, nerdy fun. playing Rosalon from Homestuck. I'm dressed as Minda from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. I'm dressed as Roxy Lalonde from Homestuck. I'm Kaito from Vocaloid. My name is Kaberi Fox and I'm dressed as General Kaberi Fox because I'm that gosh darn cool. It's always just fun to come and see everyone dressed up and just having a good time even when they're not actually doing anything at all. So. So far it's awesome. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I love coming to cons that are the smaller, like the, the as I call them, baby cons. Um, because it, there's so much heart that goes into them and there's just people that, you know, they put their heart and soul to make something like this happen and you can feel it. It's unlike the big cons where you really don't get to meet who's running it or anything. With something small, the people who are putting it on are usually in costume or running around with you. So it's, it's, it's always fun. Uh, my name is Jordan Renshaw. Um, I'm the A's Production Special Events Coordinator and the Viking Con Director for this year's Viking Con event. Viking Con is Western's uh, premier pop culture comic convention. It was a staple in Western's event programming from the 70s to the year 2000 and it just kind of died out. So um, I worked with a bunch of on-campus clubs and organizations to bring it back. We have a very special guest with us um, this morning, Mr. William E. Davis. My dad made me watch all nine seasons of the X-Files um, from start to finish, including all the movies, more than once, so it's really exciting to be here today. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so um, without further ado, let me introduce William B. Davis. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor to be here, and I'm uh, always pleased to be invited to events like this. I feel like an imposter. I mean, this is a convention about uh, comics, about uh, science fiction, about games, and what qualification do I have to speak to any of this? Um, I'm an actor. I, I drifted into this world. I got this weird part with no lines. All I do is smoke. <laughs> On the other side of the desk is a young, unknown actress with red hair. 
we're doing a low-budget pilot for an obscure science fiction show about alien abduction, if you could believe it. How many of you believe that there are aliens among us? This is Draco Malfoy from Harry Potter, and I'm at Pacific Northwest. I love the local, to be local. It's so much nicer than having to drive all the way to, you know, Seattle or Bellevue or somewhere. Um, then you have to ask yourself, why do you decide to come out dressed in public as um, characters? And I guess it's a love of creation. I like making the costumes. Um, made basically uh, the robe and the scarf. Learned how to. Learned how to knit just to make this scarf, actually. So what is your favorite part of coming to a convention like Nerd West? Um, well, I especially like how it's, because uh, it's a smaller one, it's a lot more intimate, so I get to actually like have time to talk to the fans and see all the cool booths and all the local things, and yeah, just be able to see the, the city as well. Being nerd used to be an insult, and then, I mean, I think what's changed is that everybody's a nerd when you really think about it. Like, it used to be the idea of like, oh, nerds versus jocks. But jocks really are just nerds for sports. Why do you think cons like this are beneficial towards communities? What's important about having a nerd convention? Well, what I've seen a lot of people saying is they've met people that they might not have necessarily met before. It's a really good place for people to come together with similar um, likes and similar sort of beliefs and just have a good time looking at stuff they love, listening to people talk, just talking with each other, making things. I mean, it's such a creative thing. I think any time you have the option to have a bunch of creative people in a room all together is uh, probably one of the best things you can have. Yeah, I mean, uh, absolutely I'm a nerd, although I almost feel reticent to use that phrase on myself <laughs> because it almost seems like a badge of honor. There's a lot of people who I could not hold a candle to with their amount of knowledge, their amount of passion they have for you know whatever it is they like. Like I feel almost like a fair weather nerd because I mean it's like I'm a step above the normal people who watch Game of Thrones because I've actually read the books, so I can be like, ha ha, I've got that. But then I still have to go on like Wikipedia to be like, wait, 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 who is that character again? Where they're from? Because there's a lot of people around here. Anyone to think that the word nerd is a bad thing nowadays? It's sort of like. Can I help you get out from under that rock over there? Because there's a whole big other thing happening and I think it missed you. That wraps up this episode of Western Window. Be sure to tune in next time as we explore the world at and around Western Washington University.